In this video, we've got over 20 Microsoft Teams best practices for 2024 to get through. So we're just gonna go ahead and start. Cool, so first things first, if you have watched any videos on this channel before, you will not be a stranger to me saying the first best practice that you need in 2024 for Microsoft Teams is you want a large team, larger than you think that you need, larger than you set up if people are left to their own devices. I've been in organizations that have got more teams than people, which is a big no-no. You, if you're an SME, you probably can get away with one large team in principle and split out only when there's a true privacy need. So you might end up with like two or three, depending on what you want to achieve. Usually HR and finance are the ones to split out and probably one for senior management. And then you need to decide whether you need an extra team or an extra channel. Probably the decision is going to be whether you need to use Planner or not, because Planner still in 2024 cannot be used in a private channel, bizarrely. So you want a large team, you want less teams than people, and you want channels for each main process, ideally, because the benefit of getting a one large team or a small number of large teams is that people can start to join the dots across a process and work better together rather than working in silos. And so similarly, if you have got more channels than people, that's a big no-no for best practice. You want a small number of channels you want to think about the main things that people are doing their job, whatever job they're doing across the whole organization, they probably want a handful of channels that they, they've got shown and they hide all the rest and then they can jump in and get pulled into other conversations if needed. But for doing their job, probably less than five, ideally if you're in a large enterprise, hopefully less than 10 channels that someone would be keeping up to date with. As well as channels for each pro main process, ideally, you might have a mix then of channels for each subgroup within the organization, because people tend to like having a little area for their little team that they can go and keep all their stuff. If you're not used to working out in a large team, there's then a couple of best practices that you need to layer on. So one is at mentioning in every post, otherwise assume no one is gonna see your post. And the other one is reply in thread, because you wanna keep threads of information together rather than scatter gunning things across. Main principle is you want one place for everything. So you would just want put it in one channel and bring people into that conversation rather than spreading your message across multiple different channels because then you're breaking the threads. Once you sort out your team and channel structure, you should only create a channel where there is a need for conversations to happen. After that, then sort your file structure out. Channels are gonna be the first layer in your folder structure, but don't create a channel, just create a folder. You only need to create a channel where you're creating posts. So sort your file structure out, um, consider Para, Projects, Areas, Resources, Archive by Tiago Forte. Consider flattening the folder structure because when you move to Teams, when you set up a team, it sets a, Sh a SharePoint site up. And in SharePoint, bizarrely, you can still only have 255 characters of the entire file name sort of path. So including all the folders and the file name, that can only be a certain number of characters. And if you're used to having like loads and loads and loads of different nested folders, sometimes when you move everything over, you, you sort of come a cropper and it, uh, it, won't even, it won't open or save depending on how you're opening and saving the files. So considering flattening the folders at the time you're doing this and with the principle of assuming all files are the latest version unless they're marked as a, as a date or, or and or in an archive folder. Remember to subscribe and click the bell icon to get notified every time a new video comes out. We've got new videos coming out at least every week on Microsoft at work. So that gets away from like, well, I, you know, you've got version one, version two, version 15, version final, 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 version two, final, final, version two, final, this is published. Like no one can, no one's gonna keep up with the latest date. So just, name your file, whatever the name is, and keep that as the live version. That's what everyone's collaborating on. And if you need to keep a version saved back, just in case, because all of your versions are saved within that same file anyway, then save it backwards and put the date on. So here's one we did from last month or the month before and name the month. But the one that's just got the, the name with no date, that's the live version. So it's gonna be times where you need like an official version control, that should be a smaller subset of files, and then consider you know how to do that and do that more formally. And you probably want the version within the document and to have some sort of document version control in that sort of front header of the document anyway, which you're probably already doing uh, if, you, if, if that's important to you. 
Once we've set all of that up, there will be one place to work, there'll be one place to do all of your files, there'll be one place to do all of your internal collaboration. At that point, best practice, do not use email for internal stuff. Remove internal email, that'll free up a lot of time. Similarly, do not use Teams chat for anything that should go into a Teams channel and 99% of stuff now should go into a Teams channel because we're using Teams as the one place that we're gonna work and collaborate internally. There's one place for files, one place for collaboration, one place to do everything in, in terms of internal collaboration, and therefore we don't want anywhere else to do it because that will just free up mental clutter and digital clutter. If you overuse Teams chat internally, if you don't link the file in properly, well, one, chat is siloed by default because it can only go to the people that you're putting in there unlike in the team when anyone could see anything and it's more you know, modern way of open working one chat siloed and two when you depending on how you put the link in there you might either open up permissions to a file that you don't want to and have some sort of security concern depending on how you share the link or if you put the attach the file directly into a chat it's actually creating a copy of that file in the person's OneDrive that shared it. So you then start to like break which version you're working on. If someone leaves, you've got to have a process of removing their files and putting them back. But then it's all, how do you know they've got the latest file versus the one in Teams if it's supposed to be there? So simple rule of thumb is, unless it's like, I'm going to the doctors today or I'm gonna be in late, and even being in late, you probably wanna put in the team anyway. But if you've got something private to talk to your manager about, Teams chat's good for that. Do not use group chats internally, use Teams channels. Why listen to me? I'm Gavin Jones from Me Time, where we help people save time at work to do more of the things that they love, happening to use Microsoft 365. Hopefully these videos on YouTube help you get more efficient and get more out of Microsoft 365 yourself. If you need help changing your entire organization, which is usually a little bit more difficult than just changing yourself, then that's what we do with some consulting. We we'll come in, see how your organization is working, and recommend some ways that you could work better happening to use Microsoft 365 predominantly, but also straying into any other way that you might be able to work in a more modern way. If you need help doing that, click the link in the description below to find out more. Once you've got all that sorted out, start to use Planner for group tasks. That's the one place in Microsoft where you know it's gonna go across the ecosystem and everyone can see what tasks are being done. And you might not have used any sort of task project management thing before, now you're in Teams, there's one place for it to live and you can put it into a channel uh, and have a planner board for each sort of project that you're doing, whether that's running meetings or a more formal project. Once you're using Planner, start to get the people to use to-do so that you're starting to get ingrained in, well, look, we want to get things done and we want people to tra tra track what they're working on to be able to get those things done. So to do is good so they can have a list of like personal things that they want to get done. Uh, and then it's going to feed through from Planner, whichever Planner board, wherever it is, whichever channel it is, whichever team it's in, they're all going to feed back into, if you assign someone something and you've got a due date on, it's going to appear in there to do and chase them up automatically for you. And it's all in the Microsoft ecosystem. So you don't need any other sign-ons. You don't need to worry about people getting into Asana or Trello or Monday.com. Everything's sort of already there. You can already see everyone in your organization and assign them a task rather than worrying if they're in Asana or not, and if they might miss something from having to jump out somewhere else. When you set up a channel up, it sets up a shared OneNote for you for group notes. I would use that until Microsoft sort out Microsoft Loop, which looks promising, but still skeptical. They haven't really integrated into a Teams channel yet very well. And so I would just use OneNote for group notes. So if you're taking notes about anything that is not like formal, like a formal document or formal presentation, just write notes in OneNote. If you've got a tablet and stylus or a touchscreen, you can use, you can write handwriting in OneNote, which you can't do in Loop. Um, and multiple people can, can edit the same thing at the same time in OneNote, even though Microsoft has designed a Loop to do that from the ground up, OneNote still does that. Then in terms of, Continuing to get things done, consider using Microsoft Lists and some Power Automate to make visible any process where inefficiencies arise simply from not knowing where in the process something goes. So in a lot of organizations that I see, they're generating extra emails, extra chats, extra calls because the back end process is like, well, it goes into the ether 
I don't know what's happening with it. I need to chase around to to make sure it happens, and I don't know where it is. So it could be with finance, it could be with legal, it could be with whoever to get something done, and you don't know where it is or who it's with, if they've done the, the thing and passed it on to the next person or not. And lists, you can just sort of create a flow, of like it goes to this person, this person, this person, and use Power Automate to do some approvals, even if you want to make that a bit more formal, to then flow it onto the next person, it appears in their approval list and they can sort of tick it and it goes on. And you've got the lists to make that process visible. So we've done that a few times in a few clients where that's applicable. And then from everything that we've just built so far in all of our best practices for Microsoft Teams in 2024, then we can remove or reduce time in meetings from all that we've built so far because we've got one place to do everything, people aren't losing things, they're not then having a meeting to catch up on status because we've got planner to manage the tasks, we've got lists for any bigger process and approvals so we can see where in the process it is. And a lot of meetings are just generated from status updates and we can see everything that's going on now. So we can then either remove the meeting completely, reduce the time of meeting because it's actually, well, we need to make a decision. We already know all the information that's gone on and now we can just decide rather than talking about it for ages and then deciding, which is what most meetings are, and then not deciding either, which is what most meetings are. Or we can then repurpose the meeting. So if meetings were about bringing people together and team building and talking about stuff and getting some ideas and deciding some important things, we can just split those out. So decision meetings, really short. Ideation meeting can be longer, but it's completely separate. So it's like, well, just give me all the ideas. Don't worry if they're good or not. Have a separate meeting. Like, are they any good or not? Let's let's go filter through and filter them. And more importantly, split out like well-being activities. So rather than incorporating them into other meetings and making the meeting really long and everyone you know hates it, or some people might like it because they're not doing work, and some other people hate it because they've got this to do. Completely split that. So we'll, we'll make all the other like business meetings really efficient and now we've got time to do well-being stuff and spend a bit longer and, and have, make it a nice place to work. So then similarly best practices from now on all about well-being and community once we've set all that sort of tech architecture up we can then empower people to create SharePoint pages in the team that we've just created because it creates a SharePoint site when we set the team up it's got SharePoint pages in it it's got news in it and we can sort of make a more like an intranet internet page to bring some of the things to life. So like project updates can be on SharePoint pages, meeting life cycle. So before, during, after the meeting, we can have the video, the transcription, the tasks all pinned into one place and we can just share wins. So like bottom up news can share wins because everybody in that team can create anything that is available in that team. So they can add a task, can make their own SharePoint page, they can make your own SharePoint news and the last thing to do, last bit of better practice, is then you can get away with a very simple SharePoint architecture as well as Teams architecture. Just create one more communication site to be your top level intranet. Sort of do that as you would do a normal intranet, lock that down to a smaller number of people. Now that we've given the ability for anyone in the organization to create their own news in the sort of bottom up intranet in the team, create one more communication site, top level intranet for top-down official news, policies, um, anything that you would usually have in your internet, but the internet usually is a place that things go to die and sort of drops off over time and people don't keep it up to date. Whereas now we've got the bottom-up internet, we can then have some news web parts in that top-level internet to feed stuff up for discovery and use a category field in your SharePoint pages library to tag things and then in the news web part you can like filter news from the bottom up and route it around into the top level internet so that everything appears nicely in the right place. Those are the team's best practices for 2024. Let me know what you think. Do you use any of these? Let me know in the comments below. Are there any specific ones that you stood out to you that you're going to try? really curious. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Like I said, if you need help changing your whole organization, then we can help with some consulting. Click the link in the description below to book a call to see if we're a good fit to work together. And if you just like this video, remember to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe, click the bell icon. We've got new videos coming out at least every week. And if you really like what we're doing and you want to support the channel and keep free videos coming out, 
consider joining the channel for a small monthly fee and we've got some various benefits in the membership so either just getting priority access to questions in youtube always ask a question in any of my videos i do get around to them eventually if you join then i'll answer them a lot quicker and get access to new videos before anyone else gets them if that's important to you and a shout out on sort of the next video and me time mastermind where we've got weekly live calls can go through anything that you want to talk about in Microsoft 365 and I'll try and give you my best advice and access to some members only courses that you only get in that tier. Well thanks for watching so far and see you in the next one.